Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I decided to come on and talk about something that I've been contemplating talking about for a while, um, kind of deciding against it and then for it and you know it's a bit more serious and something that's a little bit sensitive but after going back and forth thinking about if I want to talk about it or kind of share it publicly I decided that you know maybe it will help someone else in their journey as well. It's something I've been keeping just between myself and some close friends and family members but again I kind of thought maybe my journey could help someone else. So I'm here to talk about my IVF journey so far. So anyway, let's get into it. So let me get into it here. Um, I'm not gonna go into every little detail just because some details aren't important. I'm just gonna kind of gonna go over you know each round the results and where we're going from here maybe a little bit of the emotions I felt or in feeling along the way so anyway we started with our clinic in January of 2021 that's when we went in for our initial testing consult um, testing my end and my husband's end and we found out that I have um, low AMH or diminished ovarian reserve, which just means I am producing you know, less eggs um, than someone my age would normally produce, which it sucks, but there's nothing I can do to change it or there was nothing I did that caused it. It's just, it is what it is. And, you know, a lot of women have it, it ha you know, a lot of, yeah, a lot of women have it. I follow some people on social media that struggle with it and I found some groups on Facebook of plenty of other women that also deal with diminished ovarian reserve so it's pretty common actually we do also have some male factor issues but you know I'm not going to go into that I'll just focus on me and my journey here so anyway let me get into the rounds so after we finished meeting with the doctors for both my husband and I and doing all that we started our first round in June July so um for this round I did a like a normal protocol but they had me on the highest doses of medication that I could do the injections um because you know, they want to try to produce as many follicles as they can, the more follicles, the more chances that each follicle has an egg on the inside. Again, you know, they would always tell me not all eggs are mature and only mature eggs can be fertilized. So we try to get as many follicles as we can. So for this round, um, I would do, you know, an inject, small injection in the morning. Everyone's protocol is different, by the way. So you know, I would do injection in the morning and then my husband would draw up a larger injection for me at night, mixing a bunch of different meds together and do that for me. So I did that. Um, you know, that was pretty much like every round I would do a bunch of injections. But anyway, results of the first round, I had four follicles retrieved. Um, of those four, uh, two were mature and only one fertilized. So... Um, by the way, I've done four rounds of IVF so far. We're going to be doing our fifth this summer. Um, so back to my first round, this one, yeah, this one fertilized and I was happy. I was like, great, you know, fertilized and fantastic. And, you know, sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. Anyway, long story short, that um, that one fertilized um, egg did not make it to what they call a blastocyst. Um, so when it makes it to a blastocyst, they either do a fresh transfer or they freeze it and send it off for biopsy to see if it's chromosomally normal. You know, my husband and I decided that for all our embryos that we get, we do want to send them off just to make sure they're chromosomally normal, um, decrease the chances of you know, us implanting them and having a miscarriage. So uh, anyway, that one did not make it. And yeah, I was very, you know, I was pretty devastated for that first round. 
because I was like, oh, oh geez, you know, first round didn't work. Um, what are we going to do? Um, but, you know, we just got to keep moving on, keep, keep chugging along and jump into the second round. So a lot of people do like three day transfers as well. Like if they make it to day three, then they transfer them fresh right away. I asked my doctor if this makes sense for me and every doctor is different, every person's different. So what works or what I've been doing may not be the best for you if you're watching this and going through IVF. But she told me that if the, you know, the fertilized embryo makes it to blastocyst in the Petri dish, then there's a better chance that it will survive, you know, inside in your uterus. So, um, she told me that, you know, I should probably just wait to see if they make it to blastocyst and then send them off for testing like we want to do. So anyway, into our second round, she told us that we're going to change my protocol a little bit. So what we did is we added a testosterone primer for each of my next rounds. So what I would do is I would, I got this testosterone gel and um, every night I would rub it on my arm, like up here. And you know, sometimes I would alternate arms. It didn't really matter. It was just, it's just a small testosterone gel. And she told me that would help me produce uh, more follicles and have a better chance of them, I think being mature too. So I did that. And during my second round, I did the, did I do the, yeah, I did the same uh, meds as the first round, same doses and everything. And for this round, I had, let's see, I had six follicles retrieved. So I was super happy. That's two more than the last time. And five were mature. So great. And then uh, four fertilized. And then one made it to blast out of those four. So, um, yeah, I was, I was over the moon. I was so happy that it made it to blast and we did send it off for our biopsy and it did come back as chromosomally normal. So we do have one embryo that's currently frozen and we will transfer at a later date. But my husband and I decided ultimately that we do want to have, um, a couple banked or frozen before we start transferring them. Initially, we didn't think it would be this hard to get um, <laughs> to get embryos. We thought going in like, oh yeah, we'll do a couple rounds or one round or two, and we'll get embryos and we'll start transferring them right away. Uh, yeah, we didn't know that we'd be right now going into our fifth round of trying to get embryos. But anyway, I'll get there. So we have at this point one blastocyst that is normal. And right now it's frozen, transfer at a later date. We decide let's move into round three to try to get more. So round three, here we are. So we decide to go in for round three now. And I'm thinking, you know, uh, last round was great. We got <laughs> one blast is this. So this round is going to be fantastic. You know, it's hard. It's really hard not to compare yourself to other people who are going through this because you know, I'm in this one IVF group where girls are coming in and they're like, oh, you know, I got 20, 20 eggs and 10 made to blastocyst. And then, you know, you're kind of like, I'm like this, you know, yeah, but I, I got one. <laughs> um, but I have to step back and remind myself, everyone's journey is different and I can only, I can't control the situation. Um, one thing about this whole IVF journey, I know I'm going off on a little bit of a rant here, is it's taught me a lot about control, um, that I cannot control this situation. I just have to, you know, just see what happens and just go with it. Um, that's, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, round three, I did the same thing. So the month before my next round. So now we're in my second round was in August, September. So now we're in October, November. So I am priming the month before with testosterone. So for this round, I did the, set, the same medications, but a different brand. Um, so 
same medications. The doses were a little bit different just because the brand was different, um, but ultimately it was just the same, the same thing. So went into this round and I had eight retrieved and I was so happy. I was like, this is the most I've had retrieved. Um, yeah, so happy. And they would, they called the next day with a fertilization report. So for this round, I had four or five were mature. I had it written down um, somewhere, but I lost it. It was four or five that were mature. And of that four or five, only one fertilized. So that was hard because, you know, I know the odds of when one, one fertilized uh, the chance of it making it, um, you know, are not great. I mean, again, everyone is different and everyone's circumstances are different. So, you know, I was trying to really remain positive, but it was hard. It was hard. Um, this whole process has been hard. And, you know, when you're waiting that week because they call you um, the day after for fertilization report, they call you on day three to give you an update, and then they call you a week after from retrieval to give you the the report of if it made to blastocyst and if you, you know, are sending out for testing if it's if it went out for testing so that week is really hard <laughs> to wait and see so um, at the end of that cycle that one did not make it um, so now we've done three rounds and we have one blast in the freezer so you know, I asked my doctor too at this point, should we keep going? Should we take a break and just give my body a chance to rest? Because, you know, I'm doing injections every other month and doing testosterone. I've been doing this since, um, yeah, June, July. And now it's, what, it's November. And she told me, you know, if you physically can do it, mentally can do it, just I would keep going. So I'm like, all right, let's keep going. So. Now we're getting into round four, which is our most recent round. All right, so for this round, round number four, I you know did testosterone priming in December, and we switched back from the other brands of meds back to the meds that we were doing for our first and second round. We figured that maybe they would work better. I don't know. Um, so we just, we just decided to switch back to the other brands of medication that we're using, go back to our original protocol. So we did that. Um, so I started injections in January and usually I would do injections for about, uh, I would say I would do them for about 12 or 13 days, um, then trigger and then go in for my retrieval. So maybe I was on medications for about two weeks, um, doing injections for two weeks. So yeah, my month of priming and then injections and then I had my retrieval and for round four, we had seven that were retrieved and then four were mature and then again, one fertilized. So again, I was, you know, pretty upset and I'm thinking, <laughs> You know it's frustrating it's sad it's very emotional and it's it's just hard because it's one of those things that you can't do anything to change it um, you just have it it is what it is you can't do anything so um, yeah one fertilized so again I am waiting that week um, and my doctor calls me and I am hoping for the best, but preparing myself, but really, really hoping for the best, putting myself in a positive mindset, but, you know, knowing the news I might not, I might get might not be the best. So doctor calls and she tells me it made it. And I'm like, what? So she says, yeah, it made it to blast. We sent it to biopsy and I am so happy I called my husband and we are over the moon we are so excited we're like finally we have two blasts <laughs> after four rounds maybe we can you know we decided let's just if this comes back normal we'll just start moving to a transfer um 
So we're, we're thinking, you know, we would like to get more, more blasts, but you know, let's just move to a transfer. Let's just start having a baby. You know, it's been, it's been like a, basically a year now since we started the process. So I'm thinking, you know, the last one we sent away for testing came back normal. And so this one should be fantastic and great, uh, come back normal. And I asked my doctor, what are the odds of it coming back abnormal? And she tells me, you know, since, you know, you're young, so you have still good quality eggs. It's just, you know, your egg count is lower compared to other women. So she said, I think it was 75% chance that it would come back good. So I'm like, all right. So my husband and I go away on vacation to Antigua. And, you know, we're kind of like in, still in celebration mode. And I'm waiting for this call because it takes two weeks for the biopsy to come back. For our first blast, it actually only took a week. But for this one, uh, it took two weeks. So we get to Antigua. And the day after we get there, my doctor called and she told me, you know, I could tell when I could tell when I pick up the phone with her if she's about to give me good news or bad news, you know, by the tone of her voice. So you know, my husband and I just have lunch. She calls me and I, you know, I'm ready just to go in and hear great news and just ask some questions about the next steps. And she says, hi, Caitlin. And I'm like, oh, no, yeah, I can hear it in her voice. So she basically tells me, well, she tells me that the, um, the, uh, embryo came back uh, abnormal so it's you know not viable um, and to say the least it was devastating after that call with my doctor yeah I went back to the room and I cried and I got it all out but you know I was like I can't sit here and wallow when we're in this beautiful place so I let myself feel the feels for a bit and then I kind of just was like all right, enjoy your vacation and we'll deal with the rest when we get home. So it was hard and, you know, it still is hard um, just to think that we were, we thought we were at a place where we can put the rounds behind us and now we have to do more. Yeah, so we're doing another round over the summer um, because I do want to give my body a chance to take a break. Um, from all the injections I've been doing for the past eight, nine months. So yeah, it's just a good idea for me just to chill for a couple months and then we'll jump into round number five. Um, yeah, this uh, whole IVF process has just been so emotionally and physically and mentally draining. Um, but it's also, you know, it's taught me a lot in patience and control. And there's not a lot I can... I can do, you know, unfortunately, you know, I'm just so used to, you know, you put the work in, you do the thing and you get the result, right? This is something that you can't do that with. So, you know, I just kind of got to roll with it. So it's been hard, you know, I'm not going to lie. So I'm just putting it out there, you know, this out there for anyone who's kind of going through the same thing that you're definitely not alone. If you want to reach out to me, I am here to lend an ear and discuss. So yeah, that's been our IVF journey so far. So maybe I'll keep uh, everyone updated with small things here and there. We'll see. Um, not giving any specific dates yet regarding when we're doing our next round, just because I don't know if I want to share that yet. It just might something I keep personal for a bit. Maybe I decide to share it. I don't know right this minute. But anyway, that's been our IVF journey. <laughs> if you like this video, um, well, thank you for joining me in my closet to discuss our current IVF journey. Um, yeah, so if you like this video, I would appreciate if you liked, shared, and subscribed. You can also find me on Instagram, and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.